Welcome back to My Book of Mormon. And it's me, David Michael. So hello to all the MIMOs out there that are enjoying the show. And for those of you that happen to be keeping up with this live, like the ones that aren't catching up, I do apologize that you had to wait an entire week for an episode. Yeah, yeah, it must have been rough for you. So anyway, so a few things to announce. One, I did record the very first My Book of Mormon special. So I actually invited two Exmo MIMOs to join me. And uh, I asked them a whole bunch of questions about things that I'd read, and they asked me just a bunch of questions about me. I was going to release that today, but I decided, you know what, you guys have waited a whole week to hear me read from this book. So I think I'm going to release this one today, and then uh, probably the, the special will come out on Thursday. All right. So a couple other things. It was a busy week for me last week. Not only was I, as I pointed out, out of town most of the week on business, but I had a busy weekend. So I did record the special. And I also was a guest on two different podcasts. So one is a podcast called called Irreligiosophy. That is, uh, let's see, I'm on episode 27 of that show. Actually, it'll probably show up as 2.27. So they uh, made a bunch of episodes, kind of redid the format of the show, and then they came out with Irreligiosophy 2.0. So 2.27 is the episode that I'm on. Had a lot of fun with those guys. One of the hosts of the show, Chuck, is actually an Exmo, so he had quite a bit of fun kind of talking to me about what my impressions were. So if you want to listen to that show, search for it on iTunes, Stitcher, any of your uh, iPad catchers there. It's spelled I-R-R-E-L-I-G-I-O-S-O-P-H-Y. I'm not going to repeat that, so if you missed it, just go back. All right. Let's see. Then I was also on with Mr. Jake Far Wharton on the Imaginary Friends show, so that was a lot of fun, too. And uh, let's see, that that was definitely a, uh, I don't know, cruder version of me. So that, that show, I, I don't know, I kind of let my guard down and you, you would hear me th- say things on that episode that I would never say on this uh, show that does not have the explicit lyrics. So if you want to hear me with a bit of a potty mouth, you can check me out on episode 183 of the Imaginary Friends Show. So yeah, that was all lots of fun. So yeah, hopefully I'm uh, going to keep going around. So I'm doing that stuff, A, because it's fun, right? And B, uh, because it helps get the word out about the show. Uh, Jake Farwarton on the Imaginary Friends show actually said that he had listened to the first two episodes and said he was totally hooked and that he thought it was a great show and really gave me a really nice plug for uh, all of his many listeners. So that was lots of fun. All right. Well, that that I think is the last of the updates. You know, every time I record, and I really mean this, every time, as soon as I'm done, in the middle of editing, I think, ah, oh, crap, there's one other thing I was I wanted to say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hopefully this is, that was it. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to say that that was it for the updates. All right. So, actually, I do have a few. We did hit 100 likes on the Facebook page. So, I feel like it was just a few weeks ago where I was talking about, Oh, can we get to 30? And now we're like 120 or something. So, well done, MIMOs. Once again, proving you are the greatest fans in the world. Or as I posted on Facebook, for those of you that are out there, what did I say? You're the most correct fans in, on earth or something. I was trying to quote Joseph Smith there in parody. Anyway, so thank you, everyone, that helped uh, help promote the Facebook page. That, that, again, is another way to get word out about the show. And, uh, yeah, and for all of you that I did get a... Someone said they... Rated me on Stitcher, so I should have two there now. Still low, but those two, you guys, you're like expert MIMO status. Yeah, awesome. And for all of the continued iTunes reviews and and five-star ratings for the show, thank you so much. I did get two four-star ratings, and they're very, very clearly written by TBMs. So for those of you not in the Exmo community, TBM apparently means true believing Mormon. So, yeah, I understand that you guys, because you probably fundamentally disagree with everything I'm saying. Couldn't find it in yourselves to give me that last fifth star, but at least you're better human beings than the the guy that gave me one. So, appreciate the Mormons listening to the show. I continue to be baffled by why you would listen to the show, but I certainly am happy to have you as a listener. So, there we go. All right, so last time we left off, we creeped into the uh, Book of Jacob. I wasn't comfortable about it. I was hoping that we'd have a have a show that ended it after Nephi, but we're really it didn't seem to change that much. I read the first chapter of Jacob and yeah, not it's it seemed like we were still in Nephi, quite frankly. Although Nephi died, so that happened. I guess that's why they had to change the name of the book. But uh, yeah. so we're gonna jump into chapter two. What did we learn last time? 
We learn that uh, God thinks polygamy is bad, so that's interesting. You know, I don't know exactly what the LDS Church thinks about bigamy. I've I've been told that it used to be a thing, and now it's not a thing. So, yeah, I I don't know when that story comes in. I actually, actually, someone might have told me that it has it's not in this book at all. So uh, whatever. At least we found out that according to the Book of Mormon, bigamy is no bueno. All right, so let's let's get started here. Chapter two, the Book of Jacob. All right. The words which Jacob, the brother of Nephi, spake unto the people of Nephi after the death of Nephi. Oof. And by the way, we're still doing the drinking game. No one has emailed me to say, please stop doing it, it's become annoying. So until that happens, seriously, if one of you does that, I will consider stopping. <laughs> but so far, no one. So I think everyone's liking it. All right. Now, my beloved brethren, I, Jacob, according to the responsibility which I am under to God, to magnify mine office with soberness. <laughs> what? How do you magnify with soberness? It's like, I'm just going to be really, really sober. <laughs> All right. And that I might rid my garments of your sins. I come up in the temple this day that I might declare unto you the word of God. And ye yourselves know that I have hitherto been dil diligent in the office of my calling. But I this day am weighted down with much more desire and anxiety for the welfare of your souls than I hitherto been. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's basically saying, hey, come on, guys. You know I've been trying. You got to give me credit. You, you know I've been up here doing my best, but you, you guys, you guys suck. That's all there is to it. And it just, it's just, it's hurting my soul to see how much you guys suck. You know. But behold, hearken ye unto me, and know that by the help of the all-powerful creator of heaven and earth, I can tell you concerning your thoughts. How does he know what they're thinking? Hmm. I guess he's uh, claiming to be a mind reader now. Uh, how that ye are beginning to labor in sin, which sin appeareth very abominable unto me. Yea, drink, and abominable unto God. All right, so same thing. He's like, I, I can tell that you're thinking sin. Yeah, I know it. And uh, nobody likes that. It's an abomination to me, an abomination to God. So clean up your thoughts, people. Yea, drink again. It grieveth my soul and causeth me to shrink with shame before the presence of my Maker that I must testify unto you concerning the wickedness of your hearts. Now I say, come on, guys, you're making me look bad. I'm supposed to be your 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 priest, I guess, is what he would be called, I guess. Anyway, and, uh, and he's like, you know, I got to give regular updates to the man upstairs. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're really making me look bad. I'm, I look like I suck at my job, which I guess, Jacob, you know, generally speaking, job performance is usually rated by results. And, uh, yeah, you're you're not getting any. So... You know, maybe God's right to kind of, you know, knock you down. All right. And also it grieveth me that I must use so much boldness in speech concerning you before your wives and your children, many of whose feelings are exceedingly tender and chaste and delicate before God, which thing is pleasing unto God. So, you uh, know, he's saying that uh, I got to I got to talk down to you pretty hard in front of your, your wife and kids. And, you know, that hurts them. So when I when I say <laughs> when I say things that make your wife and kids cry, yeah, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all your fault. Yeah, not me. I had no choice. Good old Jacob. What a sweetheart. And it supposeth, supposeth me that they have come up hither to hear the pleasings of, pleasing word of God. Yay. Gulp, gulp, drinky. The word which healeth the wounded soul. All right, gulp, gulp, drinky was a little bit corny, wasn't it? I was trying to switch up just yelling drink every time, but gulp, gulp, drinky, I don't know where that came from. That was, I'm ashamed of myself. Yes, I feel like Jacob. So shamed. All right. I, but seriously, though, you did have to take a drink. That wasn't a freebie. Okay. Wherefore, it burneth my soul that I should be constrained, because of the strict commandment which I have received from God, to admonish you according to your crimes, to enlarge the wounds of those who are already wounded. Oof. Instead of consoling and healing their wounds, and those who have not been wounded, instead of feasting upon the pleasing word of God, have daggers placed to pierce their souls and wound their delicate minds, I don't know which part of that was metaphor and which wasn't, but it sounded like for those that he thinks are uh, misbehaving, he like beats them until they have open wounds, and when he sees them misbehaving again, he just rips those wounds open more. That does not sound uh, like a nice justice system in that society, I'll tell you. That sounds pretty rough. Anyway, but notwithstanding the greatness of the task, I must do according to the strict commandments of God, mm -hmm. and tell you concerning your wickedness and abominations in the presence of the pure in heart. Who is the pure in heart? Oh, maybe him. I guess he's the pure in heart. And the broken heart. And under the glance of the piercing eye of the Almighty God, the piercing eye. He's, he does not just looking at you. He looks into your soul. <laughs> awesome. 
Wherefore, I must tell you the truth according to the plainness of the word of God. I love that they keep referring to what we're reading as plain. Plain, I would think, would mean like easy to understand. And it has been anything but that. I mean, really, this is, this is, parts of this book were just baffling. So I don't know how plain they were. Anyway, or maybe he's just talking about like his writing style is pretty plain. Like, don't look, this isn't some nice poetic literature here. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty plain. Yeah, I'll give him that. For behold, as I inquire of the Lord, thus came the word unto me, saying, Jacob, get thou up into the temple on the morrow, and declare the word which I shall give thee unto these people. Yeah, that's my God voice. Hope you like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically, he said, go do what you've been doing every day. Can you do that tomorrow? <laughs> okay. I'm sure Jacob's like, you got it, God. Yeah, I, I was going to do that anyway, but hey, I'm, I'm on it. And now behold, my brethren, this is the word which I declare unto you. Many of you have begun to search for gold <gasps> and for silver. <gasps> Say it ain't so. And for all manner of precious ores. How could they? I guess they're playing Minecraft. In which this land, which is a land of promise unto you and to your seed, doth abound most plentifully. Yes, I have a child that plays Minecraft. That's how I know that. Don't think that there's a grown man playing Minecraft. That's not possible. Because grown people don't understand that game at all. And for those of you with kids, you're laughing right now. For those without are going... Huh? Anyway. All right. So the, uh, the Nephite said, hey, we have, we have all these, uh, all these ores laying about. Let's go, uh, let's go dig for them. Yeah. And that's apparently bad for some reason. I don't know why. All right. And the hand of providence hath smiled upon you most pleasingly. Oh, that's nice. Wait, why? But I don't, they're heathens and abominations. And now, now God's smiling on them. Huh? Maybe God was like, Hey, oh, okay. You know, it didn't say that it was bad that they were looking for gold. I guess that's bad. I mean, I guess that was my bad, right? So it looks like if you go out looking for gold and silver and precious ores, yeah, God will smile on you. There you go. Okay. So in the hand of providence hath smiled upon you most pleasingly that you have obtained many riches. Oh, huh, there you go. And because some of you have obtained more abundantly than that of your brethren, ye are lifted up in the pride of your hearts and wear stiff necks and high heads because of the costliness of your apparel and persecute your brethren because ye suppose that ye are better than they. Well, uh, let's just let's just take apart how you worded that, all right? So, it's basically saying that God's providence, the hand of providence, smiled upon them and basically decided who was going to get what, right? And pretty much that's how that reads, right? The hand of providence that you would obtain riches, right? Now, some people, God blessed more than others, okay? So, the people that were blessed more thought, hey, I must be doing something better than the one that got less. So this seems very logical to me. That makes sense. But apparently that's uh, that's that's the definition of stiff-necked. How could you do that? How do you suppose that you're better than someone else? Well, you just said I was blessed by God to get all these riches. So what's your message here exactly, Jacob? Uh -huh. I would be confused if I were them. And now, my brethren, do ye suppose that God justify you in this thing? Behold, I say unto you, nay. But he, commit, he condemneth you. And if you persist in these things, his judgments must speedily come unto you. This has got to be confusing. You're like, but Jacob, you just said God blessed me and gave me all these riches. And now I'm like, wow, I'm really blessed. And you're like, how could you say that? Now, now you're condemned. I, well, just, why, why did you send, give me gold in the first place? This is, this is confusing. Oh, that he would show you that he can pierce you. Yeah, with that, with that eye of his, right? Oh, yeah, that's the next thing. Yeah. He can pierce you with one glance of his eye and he can smite you to the dust. Wow. He's got, like, Superman vision. Couldn't Superman... Superman had laser eyes, didn't he? I think he did. Yeah, he did. So there you go. Or one of the X-Men, too, right? Cyclops, was that his name? I think. Anyway. So God has that, uh, that mutant ability. Good for him. And that he would rid you from this iniquity and abomination. Well, you're ridding him from the earth if you're smiting him to dust, but... All right, sure. And that ye would listen unto the word of his commandments, and let not this pride of your hearts destroy your souls. Think of your brethren... Like unto yourselves, and be familiar with all and free of your substance, that they may be rich unto you. Hmm, all right, so this is kind of sounding a little bit socialist, isn't it? So I think it's saying, if you get rich, share it. Share it with everybody around you, so everybody can be rich. Oh, huh, there you go. That's, well, that's nice. I'm sorry, I, I was kind of go coming down on them, and now it sounds like that's a pretty nice little message. Okay, but before you seek for riches, seek you for the kingdom of God. All right, so as long as you're godly first, then you can go out and get rich. And then you got to share it with everybody. So, there you go. 
And after you have attained a hope in Christ, ye shall obtain riches, if ye seek them. And ye will seek them for the intent to do good, to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to liberate the captive, and minister relief and sick, uh, to, uh, relief to the sick and the afflicted. Well, this is a nice little message here. So it's like, okay, if you, if you, if you really, really believe in Christ and do all that soul heart stuff, and then you say, hey, I want to go get rich. You, God's going to make sure you do get rich, but he'll only let you get rich if your intent to get rich is just to help other people. So you can't keep any of it. So kind of defeats the word rich. Anyway, I don't know. And now, my brother, I have spoken unto you concerning pride. For those of you which have afflicted your neighbor and persecuted him, because ye were proud in your hearts of the things which God hath given you, what say ye of it? So first of all, I don't know that just being proud of what you have and what you've uh, accomplished in life afflicts your neighbor and persecutes him. That's a bit of a stretch, I'd say. But, uh, yeah, apparently being proud is uh, really hurts other people. Hmm, okay. Do ye not suppose that such things are abominable unto him who created all flesh, and the one being is as precious in his sight as the other? And all flesh is of the dust. Okay, what that meant, I don't know. And for the self-same, self-same, that's one word, self-same, okay? And for the self-same end hath he created them, that they should keep his commandments and glorify him forever. So did you get that, everybody? All beings that he has created are precious in his, as, as precious in his sight as the other. But he didn't have... Any trouble in the uh, second book of Nephi, just wiping them out by the tens of thousands. Yeah, so they're real precious. Mm -hmm. And now I make an end of speaking unto you concerning this pride. And were it not that I must speak unto you concerning a grosser crime, mm -mm, something even worse than pride, here we come, people, my heart would rejoice exceedingly because of you. What? Oh, if he didn't have to speak to him of this grosser crime. Okay, but here comes the grosser crime. But the word of God burdens me because of your grosser crimes. For behold, thus saith the Lord, this people began to wax in iniquity. They understand not the scriptures, for they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms. <laughs> My favorite word in this book. Whoredoms. We need to find a way to bring that, that word back. Yeah, whoredom. Because of the things which were written concerning David and Solomon, his son. Yeah, okay. Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which things were Abominable before me, saith the Lord. Oh, we're back at it now. Hmm. More of the uh, trashing polygamy. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, I have led this people forth out of the land of Jerusalem by the power of mine arm, and that I might raise up unto me a righteous branch from the fruit of the loins of Joseph. Mm hmm. Wherefore, I, the Lord God, will not suffer that this people shall do like unto them of old. Uh, I think what he's saying is God's not going to let the Nephites act like David and Solomon. Yeah, I think. Wherefore, my brethren, hear me and hearken to the word of the Lord. For there shall not any man among you have, save it be one wife and concubines, he shall have none. Well, there you have it. That's pretty black and white right there. One wife, people. One wife. Although it doesn't say, you know, doesn't say anything about women having more than one husband. So maybe, maybe a little way to wiggle around that rule. For I, the Lord God, delight in the chastity of women. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Never mind. A woman can't have more than one husband. Sounds like he likes chastity. And whoredoms are an abomination before me. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, whoredoms. That gave me worked up too. Wherefore this people shall keep my commandments, saith the Lord of hosts, or cursed be the land for their sakes. For if I will, saith the Lord of hosts, raise up seed unto me, I will command my people. Otherwise they shall hearken unto these things. For behold, I, the Lord, have seen the sorrow, and heard the mourning of the daughters of my people in the land of Jerusalem. Yea, it's a sad drink, but it is a drink. Yea. And in all the lands of my people, because of the wickedness and abominations of their husbands. So yes, that's what's happening. The Lord sees these men just out there, getting multiple wives, and going around with their whoredoms, and their concubines, and he is just, he's just shedding a tear for all those poor wives at home. And the daughters there, it's just, it's depressing, so sad. Okay, let's, let's get out of that somber mood. Let's see if we can cheer ourselves up again. And I will not suffer, saith the Lord of hosts, that the cries of the fair daughters of this people, which I have led out of the land of Jerusalem, shall come up unto me against the men of my people, saith the Lord of hosts. Wait, what's this now? So he's saying the women are going to fight back? That can't be right. There's no way that this book is saying <laughs> that women are actually going to go into battle. All right, let me see what I let out of the land. They shall come up unto me against the men of my people. That sounds like he's going to, God's going to arm the, the ladies with some uh, heaven swords or something. Hmm, let's see what happens here. 
For they shall not lead away captives the daughters of my people because of their tenderness, save I shall visit them with a sore curse, even unto destruction. For they shall not commit whoredoms. <laughs> Sorry. One day I will read whoredoms and not giggle. But it hasn't happened yet. All right. Like unto them of old, saith the Lord of hosts. So it doesn't sound like he's actually asking the women to fight. I think what he's saying is, hey, ladies, just get behind me. I'll take care of this. Your man's committing whoredoms? Yeah, I'll smite the crap out of him. You watch this. All right. Now behold, my brethren, ye know that these commandments were given to our father Lehi. Wherefore, ye have known before me, and ye have come unto great condemnation. For ye have done these things, which ye ought not to have done. Behold, you have done greater iniquities than the Lamanites, our brethren. I think I said it right. I think I said Lamanites. Woohoo! I'm getting this. I'm getting these names down. And I believe I even said Lehi right. That's rare. Well, how many? I can't even count the number of times I called him Levi or something. Or, or Nehi. That was another one. Oof. I could not get that name right. Anyway. Ye have broken the hearts of your tender wives and lost the confidence of your children because of your bad examples before them. And the sobbings of their hearts ascend up to God against you. And because of the strictness of the word of God, which cometh down against you, many hearts died. <laughs> pierced with deep wounds. Oof. So, so, if someone's crying, and they're not happy with their husband's doing, God's going to hear that cry, and then he's going to give them that, that sight of death, the piercing vision he has, right through their hearts. Piercing their hearts with deep wounds. That will do it. Well, that was a fun start, wasn't it? All right. That was chapter two. We're jumping to chapter three. So far, so good. It was basically a really long way of saying, that's all, all that happened was, uh, please don't uh, be too proud, which I think that was the 27th time we've heard that, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And the second was, uh, yeah, don't uh, don't have multiple women, which that is the second time we've heard it. But, yeah, it was a very long way of saying that. No pride, no whoredoms. All right, let's see what, see what gems we have waiting for us in Chapter 3. But behold, I, Jacob, would speak unto you that are pure in heart. They're, they're, oh, never mind. There's some people that are pure in heart among the Nevites. That's a shocker. Okay. Look unto God with firmness of mind, and pray unto him with exceeding faith, and he will console you in your afflictions, and he will plead your cause. What? And send down justice upon those who seek your destruction. He'll plead your cause? Who's he pleading to? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so you go to God, and you're like, hey, I have some afflictions, and he's, he's he'll console you. So he's like, oh, man. Sucks, dude. I'm sorry about your afflictions. Tell you what, I'm going to go plead your case. I'm going to go before the God Council and see if there's something we can do for you. That That's just probably just poor wording, but kind of funny to visualize it. All right. And all ye that are pure in heart, lift up your heads and receive the pleasing words of God and feast upon his love. For ye may, if your minds are firm, forever. That does, I don't I just, lift up your head and receive the word of God. What does that mean? And feast upon his love. Well, first of all, if all I had read was feast upon his love, I think our minds could have gone to other places. In context, it's not as dirty, but by itself, mm, feast upon his love. Anyway, I don't, know, I don't know if it's like if you get your head high enough, you can hear God talking. I, mm, I don't know. All right. But woe, woe unto you that are not pure in heart. Well, we're right back at it again. I thought we were going to have a chapter like just about the pure. No, 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 no. Just, just two verses. Uh, that are filthy this day before God. For except ye repent that the land is cursed for all your sakes, and the Lamanites, which are not filthy unto you, wait, what? Nevertheless, they are cursed with a sore cursing, shall scourge you even unto destruction. Okay, let me get this straight. It said, you gotta repent, or the land will be cursed, and the Lamanites, which are not filthy like unto you. So the Lamanites are actually doing a good job. Like, they're being un... I don't know... What did you call them? Filthy. So they're 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 following God's laws, I guess. But it's like, but you know what? They can do whatever they want. They're cursed. <laughs> they're, all their generations are cursed. So you know, I'm glad that they're doing good things. You're much more evil than they are. But God cursed them. He can't go back on his curse. So there you go. And the time speedily cometh that except ye repent, they shall possess the land of your inheritance. And the Lord God will lead away the righteous out from among you. I don't understand how. So it's saying, Nephites. You're, you're being bad. Lamanites are being good. However, Lamanites are cursed anyway. But if you don't start being good, the Lamanites are going to come and take all your land. Well, and the Lord God will lead away the righteous out from among you. So, so it's even saying that God's going to like open the door for him. So that doesn't make it. What, what good is this curse against the Lamanites? That, that seems, that seems like a pointless curse. It's not doing it. It's not stopping them from, from defeating their enemies. Strange. Okay. 
Behold the Lamanites your brethren, whom ye hate, because of their filthiness and the cursing which hath come upon their skins. Ah, that's what it is. Okay, now I get it. Sorry, everybody. Every time they say Lamanites cursed, all they really mean is that they're dark. That's all they mean. God turned their skin dark. So, there you go. That's uh, that's the curse. So, I guess, I mean, as any one of us know, the color of your skin has no bearing on how good you will be in battle. So, you know, it's like, yeah, they're cursed. Look at them. Ugh. Dark. Ugly. But uh, they can come take our land if we keep being evil. All right, so there it was. The uh, cursing which hath come upon their skins. And more righteous. I, that doesn't even bother me anymore. Right? It's like the, I just accepted it in this book. Okay, you're, you're just racist, racist filth in here. Okay, whatever. Mm. Like the first few times I heard it, I was like, maybe sick to my stomach reading it. But now I just I just expect it. So uh, anyway, it doesn't make it any more right. But I have to admit I'm a bit a bit more uh, numb. All right. Are more... Oh, sorry. Uh, the cursing which I've come... Upon, this, is, <laughs> this is like the fifth time I've had to read the same verse. Okay, I'm starting it over. Behold the Lamanites, your brethren, whom ye hate because of their filthiness and the cursing which hath come upon their skins. Of course, you got to hate their dark skin. Just got to hate it. Are more righteous than you, for they have not forgotten the commandment of the Lord, which was given unto our father, that they should have, save it were, one wife, and the concubines they should have none. And there should not be whoredoms committed among them. And now this commandment they observe to keep. Wherefore, because of this observance and keeping the commandment, the Lord God will not destroy them. But we'll be merciful unto them, and one day they shall become a blessed people. Well, maybe you should just turn their skin back, right? I mean, God's like, hey, I made, my, my bad, my bad, turn your skin to, or maybe what it's saying is, turn their skin dark, suddenly, they, they're they like, hey, this isn't so bad. Ah, bright, bright sun, we're kind of tan now, ah, we can live with this. Yeah, maybe that, maybe that's what turned them. Because, uh, Whitey's over there, they're being pretty evil. Mm hmm. Yeah, maybe God should, uh, do a little more. A little more of his uh, tanning bed from the sky. Take care of some uh, the Nephites too. Hmm. Behold, their husbands love their wives. Well, that's nice. And their wives love their husbands. And their husbands and their wives love their children. And their unbelief and their hatred towards you is because of the iniquity of their fathers. <sighs> Wherefore, how much better are you than they in the sight of your great creator? So it's saying that the Lamanites hate the Nephites because they're fathers, I guess layman, and, and I think Lemuel's kids are now a part of the Lamanites. I think that was that weird verse a while ago that tried to explain that there's only two tribes left. So that's why they hate the Nephites, because their fathers hated the Nephites, or specifically just hated Nephi. And so it's saying, but, but God didn't like them. So because you're a descendant of the person God liked more, then he must like you more. That's That's wonderful. I don't understand how a baby being born can be less or more liked by God depending on his ancestry. But apparently that's how God works. Yeah. Oh, my brethren, I fear that unless ye shall repent of your sins, that their skins will be whiter than yours. Well, I was right. God's going to turn them back. When ye shall be brought with them before the throne of God. Also, that's it. Once they all die, hanging up there, I'm like, who are you? And it's like, I'm a Lamanite. So I can't be. You're whiter than I am. How'd that happen? Yeah. Yeah. I was holier. Yeah. So up here... Up here, you're the dark one. What do you think of that, Nephite? Yeah, that is... that is. I, You know, I, I said before, I was numb to this whole racist thing. That one got me a little. That one, uh, I feel a little sick again. <laughs> That's, yeah, if, if you're really good, your skin will get whiter. Ugh, this book is just foul. And I don't... Ugh. All right, got to move past it. You gotta move past it. Wherefore, a commandment I give unto you, which is the word of God, that ye revile no more against them because of the darkness of their skins. Wait a minute. So they're not supposed to revile them because of their darkness? What was the point of turning them dark? This, this whole thing is just, I don't know. Racism doesn't make sense anyway, so I don't know why I'm expecting to make this sense out of this. Neither shall ye revile against them because of their filthiness, but ye shall remember your own filthiness, and remember that their filthiness came because of their fathers. Once again, not their fault that their fathers were sinners and God doesn't like them. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Wherefore ye shall remember your children, how that they how that ye have grieved their hearts because of the example that ye have set before them. And also remember that ye may, because of your filthiness, bring your children unto destruction, and their sins be heaped upon your heads at the last day. So yeah, that, that's a good argument. So it's like, he's making the argument, like, God, if God doesn't like you, he will automatically hate your kids. He's just gonna, man, nothing you can do about that. And so he's saying, so you running around whoring it up with all your whoredoms, 
you're, you're really just ensuring that God's going to hate your kids. That's, that's, that's not nice. Your kids. Come on. Take care of your kids. What's wrong with you? Oh, my brethren, hearken unto my words. Arouse the faculty of your souls. What on earth does that mean? Shake yourselves that ye may awake from the slumber of death and loose yourselves from the pains of hell that ye may not become angels to the devil and to be cast in the lake of fire and then brimstone, which is the second death. That was a lot of a lot of imagery. All right, so arouse the faculty of your soul. Well, I don't. Uh, there's a faculty in there, like a school. I don't. Hmm. Shake yourselves that ye may awake from the slumber of death. Slumber of death. So so you're dead. Somehow you got to shake yourself. I don't know how if you're dead, but then you come wake up from death, lose yourself in the pains of hell. So you're you're in hell and you're dead. But if you shake hard enough, I guess you can you can come back to life. If you don't shake hard enough, you're going to become an angel of the devil and be cast in the lake of fire and brimstone. So, I, I don't know. Like, if you're an angel of the devil, you, I don't know. That would imply, like, you're part of his army. I mean, it's not just like you're a prisoner of the devil. You're an angel of the devil. So, I would think if I had if I had to live with the devil, I would certainly prefer being, like, a lieutenant, right, than a prisoner. But somehow, even his angels get thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. I don't know. I don't know what's so exciting about being an angel, then. That's, hmm. All right. And now I, Jacob, spake many more things unto the people of Nephi, warning them against fornication and, ooh, there's a big word, fornication and, lasci I don't know, any lasciviousness, <laughs> sorry, lasciviousness, I have no, all right, I'm doing the, the cheater thing with the uh, e-reader here, I'm just going to say the definition, feeling or revealing an overt and often offense, offensive sexual desire, okay. Lascivious, 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 lasciviousness. That's what it, that C in there threw me off. Okay, all right. So there you go. Wasn't an English major. Get over it. Fornication and lasciviousness, and every kind of sin, telling them the awful consequence of them. Right, because there's nothing worse than not listening to how God wants you to have sex. Apparently, yeah, that's that's just horrible. And a hundredth part of the proceedings of this people, which now began to be numerous, cannot be written upon these plates. Many of their proceedings are written upon the larger plates, and their wars, and their contentions, and the reigns of their kings. And these plates are called the plates of Jacob. Well, I thought we were reading the book of Jacob. What's this now? And they were made by the hand of Nephi. Nephi's dead. What? Wait, hold on. Uh, okay. So there's a whole bunch of people, and they went to war, and once again, they tell us that there were wars. They don't describe them. That would have been a hell of a lot more fun than what we just read. Anyway, but I don't, I'm really confused how Nephi died two chapters ago. Now it's saying, hey, in the future, there's, you know, tons of stuff that happened. And they were all written down by the hand of Nephi. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I don't know if I said it, but the very end is, and I make an end of speaking these words. Maybe it's because they said that, like, every king just inherited the name Nephi. So, like, if, if you were the fifth one, you'd be like Nephi the fifth, right? Like, you had to abandon your own name. I don't know, that's strange. All right, and then once again, so we're going in chapter four now. And uh, once again, it says, I make an end of speaking and the very next page. And now I behold, I, Jacob, right? So that's that's typical of this book. Someone's like, I'm done talking now. And then the next page, you're like, I'm talking again. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see, chapter 4. Now behold, it came to pass. Ah, uh, we haven't had it came to pass in a while, but we all know. Drink up for that one. That's right. All right, it came to pass that I, Jacob, having ministered much unto my people in word, and I cannot write but a little of my words because of the difficulty of engraving our words upon plates. That one I'll give you. Couldn't be more accurate. Like I've often said, my God, who's writing all this? Especially like the parts that seem dumb or like the redundant parts. Like you repeat the same things over and over again. If you, if your job is to do plate engraving, I don't care whether it's gold or, or brass. I don't care if you have to handwrite it. I don't mean, even paper and pen. And someone's like, all right, here's what I want you to write. Wouldn't you start writing or and etching or engraving or whatever you want to say? I just bet when I hold on. This is like, why do we have to do this again? It's like, oh, we have to keep this forever. Okay, fair, fair, fair. That's fine. Why, why am I? This is like the fifth time I've written the same thing down. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we need it again. You're like, what? But, but why? <laughs> I, I was a scribe back then. I think I would have been pretty pissed. All right. And we know that the things which we write upon the plates must remain. Sure. But whosoever things, I'm sorry, but whatsoever things we write upon anything, save it be upon plates, must perish and vanish away. But we can write few words upon plates, which will give our children, and also our beloved brethren, a small degree of knowledge concerning us. 
or concerning their fathers. That's very nice. Yeah, got to put it on plates, because, yeah, what else are you going to write it on? First of all, what else did they have to write it on? I guess scrolls or something. Mm. Now in this thing we do rejoice, and we labor diligently to engrave in these words upon plates, hoping that our beloved brethren and our children will rejoice, or I'm sorry, not rejoice, will receive them with thankful hearts, and look upon them that they may learn with joy, not with sorrow, neither with contempt, concerning their first parents. Well, that's interesting. A while ago when they referred to first parents, it was like Adam and Eve? Sounds like now they're saying, you know, first parents is now, uh, what would it be, Lehi and Sariah, yeah? Look at me remembering all the names. <laughs> Getting good at this. 4-4. Four, four. Oh, we got a 4-4. Four, four. Shots, everybody. Woohoo! Let's do it. Shots for everybody, because we got a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, look at that. Verse 4 starts with 4-4. Four, four. That's like a triple 4. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Yeah, that was a fun one. This intent we have written these things. They may know that we knew of Christ. We had a hope of his glory many hundred years before his coming. That is true. And not only we ourselves had hope of his glory, but also all the holy prophets which were before us. And behold, they believed in Christ and worshipped the Father in his name. And also we worship the Father in his name. Yeah, okay, whatever. Everyone's worshipping everyone. That's great. And for this intent, we keep the law of Moses in pointing our souls to him. And for this cause, it is sanctified unto us for righteousness, even as it was accounted unto Abraham in the wilderness to be obedient unto the commands of God and offering up his son Isaac. Oh, we're going with child sacrifice is a good example. All right, let's do that. Uh, which is a simil similitude of God. Similitude. Why did they start throwing these weird words in? I don't know. Similitude of God and his only begotten son. Oh, I can simile. I guess what mentions is good. But yeah, so saying Abraham went out to kill his own kid. And God, so Abraham was willing to sacrifice his own child. And God did the same. And, and I love how that makes someone really great. He sacrificed your kid. Like, who, what parent out there today would say, Hey, everybody, aren't I really devout? Aren't I a great person? I mean, I just killed my kid. Look at me. Direct path to heaven for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Wherefore, we search the prophets. We have many revelations in the spirit of prophecy. And having all these witnesses, we obtain a hope. And our faith becometh unshaken. And so much that we truly can command in the name of Jesus, and the very trees obey us, or the mountains, or the waves of the sea. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that, Jacob. Uh, I, you can command the trees and the mountains and the waves of the sea. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's just absurd. All right. Nevertheless, the Lord God showeth us our weakness, that we may know that it is by his grace and his great conden condescension unto the children of men that we have power to do these things. That word I remember, cond cond condescension, condescension, yeah. I think I've called it condensation in the past and other other words that sound like that. I don't know, whatever. I'm sorry. When you're reading, you just, who knows. Whatever, sorry. Sorry if I've said it wrong in the past. I think I said it right that time, although I repeated it three times. So one of those three I think was accurate. We'll see. Behold, great and marvelous are the works of the Lord. How unsearchable are the depths of the mysteries of him. And how impossible that man should find out all his ways. And no man knoweth of his ways, save it be revealed unto him. Wherefore, brethren, despise not the revelations of God. So this is great. It, uh, you know, anything that can't be explained must be God, because you can't explain everything that's God. And again, with that circular logic, i got to love it. For behold, the power of his word, man, power of his word, man. Wait, by the power of his word, man came. Oh, sorry. There should have been a comma there. Okay, so for, for behold, by the power of his word, man came upon the face of the earth, which earth was created by the power of his word. Wherefore, if God being able to speak, and the world was, and to speak, and man was created, oh then, why not able to command the earth, or the workmanship of his hands upon the face of it, according to his will and pleasure? That's, that's, okay, I mean, we're right. If you assume that all God had to do was, like, say a word, and all of creation happened, right? I mean, if that's all it took for him, then why wouldn't you think that he would be able to do anything he wanted with that creation? And that is fair, which then begs the next question. His will and pleasure is to have the amount of suffering on earth that we have. Will and pleasure. That's what that kind of means, isn't it? So, yeah, all of the uh, impoverished, starving children in the world, the... Uh, genocide and rape that happens and all over the place and wars that are broken out over for no reason that's god's will and pleasure because he could stop it 
Mm -hmm. That's kind of what that says. That's lovely. What a, what a great God. I'll tell you. He's something else. Oh, but wait. See, here's my problem. Here's my problem. I assume I should have gone back to the last verse, right? No, yeah, I should have remembered. It's impossible for me to know what is will. I, I can't know. He's God. My brain can't comprehend. Yeah. So there's a, there's a real, there's a great reason that, uh, you know, all of these horrors are happening to all of these innocent people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there is. I just can't, I don't know what they are. Wherefore, brethren, seek not to counsel the Lord, but to take counsel from his hand. For behold, ye know yourself, I'm sorry, ye yourselves know that he counseleth in wisdom and in justice and in great mercy all of his works. Sure. Wherefore, beloved brethren, be reconciled unto him through the atonement of Christ, his only begotten Son, that ye may attain a resurrection according to the power of the resurrection which is in Christ, and be presented as the first fruits of Christ unto God, having faith and obtained a good hope of glory in him before he manifesteth himself in the flesh. <sighs> I'm so tired of them talking about Jesus coming. It really. Because, I mean, I think at some point in this book, because it told us in the beginning, remember, like Jesus is going to actually come talk to these people. That might be interesting. But constantly saying, oh, don't forget, in 600 years Jesus is coming. It's like, yay, okay, thank you, that's great. Uh, now behold, beloved, now, I'm sorry, and now, beloved, marvel that I tell you these things, for why not speak of the atonement of Christ? <laughs> it's like he knows what I'm thinking. This is crazy. Or maybe I'm the prophet. Because I was like, why do they keep talking about this Christ? Like, stop it. And then it says, uh, I tell you things before, why not speak of the atonement of Christ? It's like we're having a conversation right now. And attain to a perfect knowledge of him. How can you have a perfect knowledge of something that doesn't exist yet? Ugh. As to attain to the knowledge of a resurrection and the world to come. Behold, my brethren, that he prophesieth, let him prophesy to the understanding of men, for the Spirit speaketh the truth and lieth not. That's great. So remember, kids, the little voices in your head speaketh the truth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what they say. There, that's 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 the this is that's the spirit talking to you. Little little man, little voice in your head. That's the spirit. Listen to it. Wherefore it speaketh of things as they really are, and of things as they will really will be. <laughs> Wherefore these things are manifest unto us plainly for the salvation of our souls. But behold, we are not witnesses alone in these things, for God also spake them unto the prophets of old. Sure, that whatever. It's just again, it's saying. Just turn on your soul, and suddenly you'll have this, like, direct radio channel with God talking to you, I'm sure. But behold, the Jews were a stiff-necked people, and they despised the words of plainness and killed the prophets. I still, which prophets did they get? That's like the tenth time they've said that the Jews are just out there killing prophets. All right, and sought for things that they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark, they must needs fall. For God hath taken away his plainness from them, and delivered unto them many things which they cannot understand, because they desired it. And because they desired it, God hath done it, that they may stumble. Weird. Get with this weird cause and effect here. All right, so God gave them things that they couldn't understand because they wanted it. So like, dude, you know what I want right now? What's that? Oh, I would totally go for something I can't understand. Like maybe, I don't know, like... Let's go watch a Chinese movie with no subtitles. That'd be great. I just, I just really desire to, to go do something I can't understand. And God's like, oh, really? You want something you don't understand? And there you go. God gave it to him. And he's like, oh, oh, you don't understand it? Hmm. Well, joke's on you. And probably like, no, we desired this thing we didn't understand. That's what it says. I'm just then, I'm sorry. I'm just telling you what it said. They desired things they couldn't understand. So he gave it to them. Great. That's, thank you. And now I, Jacob, am led on by the Spirit unto prophesying. For I perceive by the workings of the Spirit which is in me that by the stumbling of the Jews they will reject the stone upon which they might build and have safe sound foundation. Okay. And behold, according to the Scriptures, this stone shall become the great and the last and the only sure foundation upon which the Jew can build. They, they must be talking about Jesus. So Jesus is a stoner now, apparently. Huh. Yeah. Might be why he was always talking in prophecies. He's like, you know, man... You hear about the prodigal son, man? <laughs> Sorry. I know it didn't say stoner. It said he was a stone. I added the R for comedic effect. Yeah, calm down. I'm sure I'm going to get a, several postings of the website from, from the TVMs. Like, you don't understand, man. Jesus wasn't a stoner. Yeah, all right. And now, my beloved, how is it possible that these, after having rejected the sure foundation, can ever build upon it? That it may become the head of their corner. The head of their corner. Whatever. Behold, my beloved brethren, I will unfold this mystery unto you. 
If I do not, by any means, get shaken from my firmness in the spirit and stumble because of oh, what? Because of my over anxiety for you. What does that mean, my beloved? Brother, I will unfold this mystery unto you. Is that coming up? Is that like the next chapter? Probably not. It probably won't. All right. I will unfold this mystery unto you if I do not by any means get shaken from the firmness of my spirit. I I, I keep forgetting. This is Jacob talking. Okay, so Jacob saying, I'm going to try and unfold the mystery. Not sure what mystery that is. Um, and if he doesn't, and 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 okay, and then, okay, totally get it now. Well, not really, but I'm going to do my best. So he's saying that I'm going to help you unfold this mystery, and I got to try. I got to do it with all everything I got because I can't get, I can't let my spirit fade at all, right? Because I'm just so anxious. I'm just crazy. I'm just, I'm a nervous wreck about you, stiff necked whoredom people. And uh, yeah, I think that's what that was getting at. Well, that was a Sorry. Sorry for the bumbling end of chapter four there. All right. You know, I got another chapter. If it's more than two pages, yeah. Oh, good Lord. Holy crap. <laughs> chapter five. Oh, my God. That I just kept hitting page, 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 page. That's like 20 pages long. Okay, we are not doing five. Okay, so this is a great stopping point. I'm not going near that one. Actually, I think someone posted on Facebook that there was some chapter in Jacob. Like, don't end. Like, don't try to read that chapter at the end or something. It must have been five. I don't remember. I can't memorize all the stuff that I see, but I, yeah, I'm not touching that. So that's okay. This is uh, this is the end of episode. What is it? Fifteen. Yeah, episode fifteen. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Fifteen. So this is the end of that because I'm not going anywhere near that. Again, sorry everybody. I was gone for a week. Did my best. Did my best. I actually believe it or not, I actually brought my microphone with me on this business trip. I, I, I mean, it was. Close enough that I could drive there, but far enough that I was at a hotel. And so I, it wasn't like I had to check it in a bag. So I actually did some touch-up work uh, at the hotel where I was at. So I guess I could have recorded another episode while I was gone. I don't know why I'm admitting this. I'm going to cut all that out. That's nonsense. You guys don't care about that. I don't think so. All right. Well, that is the end of chap episode, not chapter, episode 15. As, as always, it's been lots of fun. So for all of the MIMOs that want to send me any kind of personal communication, you can do so by emailing comments at mybookofmormonpodcast.com or you can go leave a post on the website. you got to click on an episode, but you can leave anything you want. Tons of posts there already, and that is www.mybookofmormonpodcast.com or you can leave a post on the Facebook page. And while you're there, like it, which is once again Facebook slash Podcast. And then the one name for marketing purposes that does not include the word podcast at the end is my Twitter handle, which is at my Book of Mormon. Sadly, Twitter did not allow enough characters to include the word podcast. So it's just my Book of Mormon or at my Book of Mormon if you want to follow me on Twitter. Whew, that took a while to say. All right, so I have been trying. I think uh, once again, I know before I said I was trying to get John Larson from uh, Whitefields on to talk to us about the uh, Taylor Scholarship. I, I don't know what it's up to yet. I've been uh, trying to get a good, accurate count, so I'll continue to try and do that. So that um, and you know what, if I find out before Thursday, I'll just uh, I'll probably just tack, record it and tack it on to the beginning of the special, just so we get a good count. But for all of you that have, all of you that have donated to the Taylor Scholarship, thank you so much. I know it's going to do a lot of good for a lot of people. And uh, yeah, sorry they don't have an update about that. I will if I have to if I have to bang down some doors. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some some numbers on that soon. Okay, well, that's it for now. You guys are awesome. I'm glad to be back. It feels like I was gone longer than a week. But, uh, but yeah, really happy to be back. Really happy to be recording again. Really happy to be reading the book again. And, uh, again, expect a midweek special with, uh, for lack of better terms, an interview of your host. So, yeah. Okay. Well, my mos, keep being awesome. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. This song is licensed for use within this podcast. All song and copyright information can be found at www.mybookofmormonpodcast.com.